Could I be the a-hole for possibly kicking out a family from a home that was illegally sold to them? My father passed away a few years ago, and my adopted mom's, who is old and has dementia, relatives sold my father's and mom's house for half of the value with everything inside in a rush sale. I did not know the law at that time, and was told by my mom's relatives that my father had no will, so everything automatically went to my mom and her family. I came across an article that in that country, that's when a person dies without a will, their heirs slash children automatically inherit the estate. The estate cannot be sold without all heirs agreeing. If it is sold, the sale will be void. I have contacted a lawyer and it was true. I can get the house back by simply showing my birth certificate. Also, because my mom has dementia, she is not capable of doing a sale. The lawyer went to meet with my mom on my behalf to ask a few questions about the sale of the house. Her relatives heard everything, then started attacking me online and making nasty posts about me. How I was going to kick a family out of a house because of pure greed, and that I already have a house in USA, and I'm greedy to have another house. They threaten that they will get the new owners to sue me, etc. My mom's relatives don't work, and use the money of the sale of the house for their own benefit. So not only will they have to return all the money, the new owners of the house will now have to look for somewhere else to live, which they can no longer afford a house because the house was sold for half of the market value, and that is what they will be getting back. Would I be the a-hole for possibly kicking them out? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. You're a victim here too. Your mom's family not only lied to you, but they sold and profited from something that was rightfully yours. All you were doing is undoing something that should never have been done in the first place. It's unfortunate this family will lose their home, but this is not your fault. Edit. Mom's family are the a-holes, not Opie's mom. The family who bought it cannot claim to be an innocent buyer, because what they paid for was half of the value of the house. It was also not done with a proper agent, just mom's relatives. So, at the same time, I think the family who bought it should have known something fishy was going on. I completely agree with you. The sale would have been full of red flags, yet the buyer chose to ignore every one of them and go ahead with the purchase. It's the age-old saying, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. They should have done their research and protected themselves by insisting on going through the proper channels. Shockingly, this kind of stuff happens all the time. I used to do proper management, and there would constantly be people renting houses where the landlords are in the process of getting evicted and don't tell the tenants. Wild. Not a day hole. If it is me, I would proceed to claim back that house, and at the same time together with that family, sue the relatives for fraud. They have to pay back that family the money and also compensation. I don't think it would be a good idea to team up with the buyers. They bought a house for half market value, from family friends, without a real estate agent, or any other good faith attempts to follow any real regulations in relation to the sale. This would have otherwise been uncovered before sale went through. Yes, if they have evidence, they were acting in some good faith, but I doubt it. They should absolutely also sue the family who sold it to them. I just don't think Opie should join them. Opie should absolutely take them to the cleaners for emotional damages and any and all needed repairs to the house. As they legally sold all their stuff as well, there should be compensation for that too. If someone stole a wedding ring, then it was sold and turned up on someone else's finger, should it not be returned to the original person? Not today, Hull. Stolen goods are always returned to the rightful owner. Added to add, help the family sue your relatives. They stole from your mother as well, and you should make sure they pay for that. Next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to give my grandfather's flute to my stepsister? My 14 female paternal grandfather, 77 male, recently passed away. He left me flute and 50,000 rupees in his will. He left my stepsister, 16 female, 75,000 rupees. My grandfather and I were very close, whereas my stepsister and him barely spoke. The flute is very meaningful to him and to me, as he has been playing it since he was 12 and he started teaching me how to play it when I was 4. This flute is a family heirloom from the 1400s and it was apparently gifted to my family by a South Indian king, so it is very important to my family. My stepsister is mad that he gave the flute to me instead of her, even though she doesn't play the flute. She received more money than I did and she wasn't close to my grandfather. 
She told me that she would give me 25,000 rupees for the flute, but I refused, as it is a very sentimental item, and I hope to pass it on to a daughter slash son of my own someday. My stepsister started crying, called me a selfish witch, and told me to piss off. Am I the a-hole? Edit. Just to clarify, she and her mother have been living with us since August of last year, and her mother married my father in January of this year. My grandfather passed away in April. The flute is made of bamboo, and it works perfectly well. It is a traditional Hindu flute. It has a carved peacock feather design. Not a day hole. You should safeguard your flute, because she seems the type to steal or break it for spite. She's not even a blood relative. Yep, lock it up in a safe deposit box if you can. I've read too many posts of family members not getting to use some other family member's possession, and then taking it. Or put it in a museum on loan. Still belongs to Opie, but it's safe as hell and can be admired. Not a day haul. Wills exist to ensure that assets and belongings go to who they're intended to. Your sister should respect your grandfather's final wishes. She is being selfish. And given the history of the flute and her lack of sentimental attachment to it, she will likely sell it, and for much more than she's offering you. Make sure that you have it appraised, insured, Keep it locked away in your home and, of course, play it in honor of your grandfather's memory. Not a day hole. You are definitely not a day hole. Opie, you should safeguard your flute. Is there any adult in your maternal or paternal side who would side with you? Stepsister is acting way too entitled, and I'm worried she may try to steal or break the flute. My dad and grandmother are siding with me, and they're trying to fix the situation. How is your dad's wife handling it? My dad's wife is trying to reason with my stepsister. She's overseas for work, so there's not much she can do right now. Update. I've locked the flute in my cupboard. I'm not going to keep it in a safety deposit box because I play it often. Update 2. I'm going to ask my dad if I can keep it in a safety deposit box. Thank you all so much for the advice. I really appreciate it. Next story is titled... Am I the a-hole for ruining my sister's vacation by not going to Hawaii? I, 24 female, live in California, while my sister, 29 female, lives overseas. She loves to travel and also loves California, so she's been dying to come here for the past year. She's finally coming here in June. This will be the first time I've seen her, and hell, even talked to her, since December 2018. On that note, I don't really get along with her, and I'm not super excited she's coming here. Growing up with her was hell, because she always demanded things go her way, and would have screaming fits, even in her 20s, unless we do things her way. From a young age, I was in charge of micromanaging everything to make sure everything's well for her, and it was exhausting. Because of that, I don't think she's ever learned to compromise. She visited California twice in 2018, and both times she stayed with me in my apartment. And it was complete hell. She treated me like I was a guest in my own apartment, insulted me and my friends multiple times, would have fits if I didn't want to do something she wanted to. She also borrowed my car and put 1,000 miles on it in two weeks, put 87 when it needed 89, and went through a tall road without telling me so I had to pay the penalties. It was complete hell having her over. She was supposed to visit in June 2019 for my college graduation, but canceled after I told her she couldn't use my car. Anyway, I'm already getting in trouble by my parents for not letting her stay in my apartment or use my car while she's here in June. They're trying to say that it's been a rough year for her, spousal issues and custody drama, and she deserves a break. I'm finally standing my ground and saying no. She texted me asking if I could go to Hawaii with her or San Francisco, and I told her no. Not only do I not want to take time off of work for her, I'd rather spend my time off with my boyfriend or friends. But because last time I took a trip with her, she promised to split the hotel room, and I ended up paying the full price of the trip. Both her and my parents are calling me an a-hole for not wanting to go with her to Hawaii or another trip. I still don't want to go, but maybe I'm being insensitive to everything she's been through? I just know it'll be drama if I go. Now for the comments. Not an a-hole. I tell your sister and parents that you've spent enough effort in the past trying to play hostess to your sister, and you seem to have never lived up to her standards, so you'll pass on yet another opportunity to let her down. If your parents are so concerned about you providing sister with a quality experience, then maybe they should insert themselves into the situation and take care of it all themselves. It sounds like they like her more than you, 
or you wouldn't have had such a bad childhood slash life. Sorry, not sorry. No parent is a good one if they let a child grow up like they let her and force it on you. Agreed. And this might be a low blow. But if she's never learned how to compromise, throw tantrums and basically rock the boat until she gets her way, I wonder why she currently has marriage issues. Time for Opie's sister to finally grow up. Not day hall. Not day hall. Your sister is really toxic and your parents are enablers for her behavior. Since she is a hassle, you should tell her that you can go on the trip if your sister pays you $20,000 up front of whatever she owes you for your stress. Or, if you want a slightly gentler approach, calculate how much she owes you for the previous hotel room, petrol, wear and tear, tolls and penalties, room and board at your apartment, any lunches, etc. you paid for, and give her the bill. You'll go on holiday with her when that's paid, plus the future holidays. But still don't go. You don't have to hang out with someone you don't like just because they are family. Don't be an a-hole to yourself. Not an a-hole. Ask yourself, why is it she doesn't have any of her own friends that would love to go to Hawaii with her? Why is it always you that has to deal with her? I'd say your parents knew from a young age she'd struggle without siblings, and think simply because you're born to the same people you should stick by her no matter what. Your sister and her happiness isn't your responsibility, so don't feel like you should be pressured into being miserable so she can be happy. I mean, she has friends, but she lives like thousands of miles away. We're also from the Middle East, where women need guardians, father or husbands regardless of age, permission to travel, and not a lot of people's fathers slash husbands allow them. But yeah, I don't know if she doesn't like to travel with them because she can't bully them to do whatever she wants like she does to me. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not paying for completed services I didn't ask for? Lawn care. I woke up this morning to the wonderful sound of a lawn mower and cleanup being done. Living in a residential neighborhood, I didn't think anything of it. I rolled over and tried to go back to sleep. About 20 minutes later, I hear my doorbell ring. So I check my camera and there's an individual at the door. I figure it's the guy asking adjacent neighbors if they would like services done, as is pretty common, and I go downstairs to speak to him. When I open the door, he says good morning, and then lets me know that it was a little less work than he coded, so it would be $40 and not the 50 And as soon as I open the gate, they could start on the back. In my confusion, I step outside, and sure enough, my front lawn was mowed, edged, and cleaned up. I let him know that they must have got the wrong house because I do my own work and they may have gotten the address wrong. There is some back and forth. He shows me the paperwork. It's indeed my address. And I notice the number is not mine. At this point, still very calm, to which I recommend him. He says all the information is correct. And I let him know that the number isn't mine. And he can call it if he wants to confirm. He obliges. Goes to his truck and gets on the phone. There appears to be some conversation. He looks towards my address plate, more talking, hangs up and comes back to speak to me. He lets me know that the homeowner that ordered the services gave the wrong address. So I apologize for the inconvenience, and I'm about to go back inside when he then asks that I complete the payment for the services. I inform him that I didn't ask for it, and that he should be more diligent in ensuring properties match work orders before completing services, and he counters with telling me that the owner said they wouldn't be home and the back would be unlocked probably why he knocked on my door to begin with. He then tells me I was very rude for not stopping them. I was asleep for pretty much all of it, and that it was a very mean trick to play. Am I the a-hole for not paying or giving them some kind of compensation? Not the a-hole. He counters with telling me the owner said they wouldn't be home. If he knew that, then why did he knock on the door instead of calling the client's number? Well, the gate that was supposed to be unlocked was not. So, it wouldn't be crazy to assume that the owner's plan had changed and try knocking before calling them. But which is more likely? That the owner forgot to unlock it and still isn't home? Or that plans changed in their home, completely ignoring the work being done, and therefore ignoring the loud, enough to wake the homeowner reminder to unlock the gate? Seems to me like the former is more likely and would require a phone call. Not saying it's absolutely a scam, just that it doesn't add up logically and smells kind of fishy. Not an a-hole. Tell them to go after the person who actually ordered the services for payment. Right? Go do the job you meant to do, and then charge the extra to the actual customer for the screw-up. Or just swallow it and charge no one for the screw-up. Not an a-hole. 
At this point, his next move should have been to wish you a good day, apologize for the confusion, and charge the initial requester double for the duplicate service due to incorrect information.